Building a Stuart 504 boiler plant, part 5. Finishing the special water tank for the live steam injector and the hand pump. I was hoping to keep that part a secret, but a viewer preempted it and guessed what I was going to do. It seems a bit silly to have two water tanks in the same plant, and it also seems a little bit pointless taking both of the water feeds from the top tank, as the bottom tank is going to fill up with water from the injector overflow. I'm drilling a hole in the side of the bottom tank. Well, it's not a bottom tank at the moment, it's currently just a ring of copper. But this will be soldered to a base, then it becomes a tank. On screen at the moment, I'm showing me using a tap to thread the hole. And as you can see, I'm threading this by hand. And this is a 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch tap. And once I've finished threading this, the next thing to do is to take it out of the drilling machine and clean up the inside edge, which is obviously a little bit raggy. Now normally I wouldn't bother doing this if I was making a condenser, but because this is going to be visible, I think it needs cleaning up, and I'm using my small Minicraft drill with a drum sander fitted. And now with the aid of this socket, I'm fitting a steam union into the hole. And this steam union is the centre part of a double union. I use a lot of these, they're very useful things to have in the workshop. This clip shows the tank upside down, with the outlet currently at the top. So that's the water outlet done, now it's time to do the water inlet to the pump, which is also an outlet if you know what I mean. In this clip I'm actually using the water pump itself, up against the tank which is sat on its base, as it will be when it's finally finished, to find the position that I need to make a hole to take another union to feed the water pump. And as usual I'm using my felt tip pen. There's another way of doing this, I could make a special sharp point that comes out of the pump itself, and then I could scribe a line on the tank, which would be perfectly in line with the pump. But to be honest, this is near enough for rock and roll, and when the job's done, as you can see, both the pump and the water outlet on the tank are in line. This bottom water tank outlet is going to be connected to the water pump's inlet using a short piece of pipe. But unfortunately, the right angle fitting is in the wrong position. But this was an easy fix. I just used a couple of shim washers of the correct thickness and then re-tightened the fitting and now it's where I want it to be. Not only is it at 90 degrees to the vertical part of the pump body, it's also at 90 degrees to the horizontal part of the pump body as can be seen here. This allows me to mount the water pump on the baseboard in a sensible place where I won't burn my hand when I'm pumping water into the boiler. Before I soft solder all this together, I've put a couple of pipes in the fittings. I drilled out the fittings to accept these pipes which are 3 16 of an inch in diameter. Before I started to heat everything up to solder these parts together, I coated the edge of the copper pipe with some Friar Lux solder paint. I didn't really need to do this, this was a sort of automatic response. When I make closed condensers, I always use Friar Lux paint. And that makes sure that once the Friar Lux paint melts, because I generally put a lot of it on if you've watched my other videos, it all runs down and forms a good joint and then I just go around the outside edge with some of this solder. This is electrical type solder for soldering electrical connections. It has a flux built in, a resin flux that's in the centre cause. And I've always found this stuff to be perfectly adequate for soldering applications such as this. A quick common sense notice, I would never use this type of solder or any type of soft solder on anything that's going to be a pressure vessel. This is just a water tank, and the water's not under any pressure, and when I soft solder the condensers that I make, they are not pressure vessels either. They just let the steam in one end and straight out the other end. Another thing that's worth mentioning is that soft solder has a low melting point. You can buy soft solder that has a higher melting point, and pardon the pun, I don't see the point of this, because if I needed solder with a higher melting point, I would use silver solder. Silver soldering is an entirely different process to this. And apart from showing silver soldering within some of my videos, I've also made videos specifically about silver soldering, piping, and even larger items. Just search for how to silver solder for beginners. What I'm doing in this clip is using some flux and some water to spread out the solder and generally tidy up the job. I don't really need to do this, I'm just showing you what's possible when doing a soldering job like this. While the completed lower tank assembly is cooling, I'm filling a top off a spray can with some cellulose thinners, or lacquer thinners as you call it in the USA. And I'm doing this to remove the paint from a steam valve. And for the viewers who write in, please note I'm not touching it in this episode. This is going to be the injector water valve, and this valve is going to be fitted into the polished copper part of the tank. 
and it's also going to support the weight of the injector, not that there's much weight to start with. So I'm measuring it up so I can make an adapter. Over now to my small box for the lathe and I'm making the adapter. A very simple job. Face across the front and I'm just cleaning up the outside to thin it out a little bit. Obviously not too much because this is going to be threaded 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch to accept the injector as well as the outlet of the water valve. The next thing to do, as always, is to centre drill the end. And this keeps the twist drill that I'm about to use perfectly in line. There it goes. And finally, I'm using a 5 sixteenths by 32 threads per inch tap to thread the hole down the centre. The final job is to part off the finished component. Now it's time to fit it to the injector and the water valve. A little bit of Loctite 542 is always a good idea. I always use Loctite 542, it's a general purpose thread sealant. I use it on both high pressure and low pressure steam fittings. I'm using Loctite 542 in this application because I don't want any chance of an air leak in this junction. If there was an air leak here, the injector wouldn't work properly and it would keep spitting steam and water out of the overflow instead of it going into the boiler. Before I go any further, it's time to mount the central column. I countersunk the hole, and this is a countersunk bolt. And the top part of the tank is secured to the column with an ordinary stainless steel bolt. Because this bottom tank can only be of a limited size, both from a visual point of view and a space available point of view, the original overflow needed to be modified. The brass overflow pipe simply screws into the injector body, so I removed it, machined it, and silver soldered a piece of copper piping into it. And this makes sure that the overflow of water goes into the tank, not on the bench. I've given the base a bit of a clean up, but it's difficult to clean because of all the small parts. But I have a solution. I will empty the dishwasher in the kitchen, and when I fill it with the next load of crockery, I will include my small water tank. After which, it will be very clean and ready for painting. But that's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.